YouTube as it going the go downs is back with the Texans video a bit of a preview what to watch players games all that to watch and some fans takes we are doing this for every NFL team there's a playlist on the channel with the teams that we have done make sure to comment which team I should do next the Houston Texans I think a legit contender we'll talk about some things that I I think aren't being talked about enough um, you know, it's going to depend on some things if they can be that contender right now. They were my sneakiest team of last year going into last year, and they end up being a lot more sneaky than even I thought. So excited to break this down here. Uh, number three, I, I, I think they fixed their two biggest offensive issues, and no one really talking about this too much. I think when you bring up the Texans and what they did this offseason, they talk about Diggs, which rightfully so, Daniel Hunter, um, you know, players like that. Uh, and again, rightfully so, but... The, and they didn't have many issues or glaring issues last year. But I thought the two biggest things on offense, they kind of go together. I thought the running game could have been more consistent. And they were towards the bottom half of the NFL in terms of rushing offense. Singletary stepped up. You know, he was better than Pierce, which was uh, maybe a little bit of a surprise to some people. Uh, and he had flashy, big plays, important plays. I thought he's a little inconsistent. I always thought he's been, been a little inconsistent with hitting the hole. Maybe his long speed, breakaway speed. Um, so I actually think it's a bigger upgrade with Joe Mixon, who they had to have, you know, bigger upgrade than it's being talked about. It's a really good running back. To me, he got an, he got an upgrade with offense as long as the Texans offense line's healthy. Um, so he should be able to run even better. Um, he can catch the ball. He punches in the end zone, which goes into my second part. I thought that red zone offense was very inconsistent last year. A lot of inconsistencies with these two things. And because there'll be, then they were, weren't God awful a little bit, you know, b below half point in the league. But I felt like they had trips to the red zone. Like, Oh my God, that was so easy to get down there. And they're going to, they're going to punch this thing in. They're going to get in there and they just kick a field goal. It's like, uh, a little underwhelming, you know, and it was with maybe physicality at the goal line or the play calling was uh, kind of got worse when he got to that range. But I think they get better in that category, you know, another year with the coaches. But adding Joe Mixon is huge. He punches the ball in the end zone. He catches the ball out of the backfield. And it opens more things up, too. Like, if you have more of a balanced game, it opens things up for the play caller, the offense. Really, ultimately, run game getting better helps the red zone, but can open things up for the pad, can make the passing game better as well. So two things, I really at Joe adding Joe Mixon's bigger than the more I'm talking about it. It's like bigger than just adding Joe Mixon right now. So not being talked about enough. Cannot wait to watch and see if that's actually a fact, if it's all improved because I mean, you can nitpick and say, what were other flaws for the offense? You know, maybe not really flaws, but I mean, you want them to be a little healthier, uh, tank Dell offensive line, uh, they were a little inexperienced, but that's something that's going to get fixed by default. Really, there was those two things away from being oh, perfect, almost perfect. So that's something to think about. It's something to keep an eye on there. Uh, number two on the list. I'm excited about the defense. Always excited, excited about D'Amico Ryan's defense, what they've added. You know, Daniel Hunter, big thing. But how about that young, versatile secondary? That is going to be fun to watch, uh, led by Derek Stingley. We'll talk about him a bit more here in a little bit. But a young rising star, a beast of a corner, obviously. But And he's going to be on the field like at all times for the secondary. But the rest of it, the rest of it, there's going to be a little mixing and matching and a little bit of different alignments, and I am pumped for that. I'm curious to see how they use these guys. But Kamari Lasseter, rookie from Georgia, who they liked a lot, who they like a lot. I heard he's tearing it up in OTAs. Tough to get a full grasp on that right away. Outside physical corner that people think he can, yeah, he can take some reps on the inside and maybe be like a Witherspoon type player uh, if you need when you need him to. Uh, some upside in there. Imagine he starts outside, but you can mix him up. You know, uh, King on the inside, really good slot guy. Jimmy Ward, he's a free safety and a slot corner. He kind of plays both, kind of a unique player. They draft Kalen Bullock, who is a playmaking free safety. Some teams have him graded as outside corner. They think he has upside at corner. I think, could be wrong, I think D'Amico Ryan's going to play around with that a little bit. I think you can take, he can be a free, he's the Jimmy, future Jimmy Ward, a free saver that maybe can play a little bit of slot corner, maybe he can play in the slot a little bit. Uh, Jalen Petrie was, uh, I thought when he was at Baylor, his best play was in the box. They gave him some reps at free safety. He can do a little bit of both. I want to see how he grows. Um, can keep going down the list here. Then they got some young guys that were supposed to be someone that quite haven't figured, haven't quite figured it out yet. Jeff Akuda. I mean, we thought he'd be like a Derek Stingley or a better type player. Um, now he goes to a new team, 
good place to be. Really good coach, D'Amico Ryans. Uh, really good young group of defensive backs to grow with. Maybe he hits his stride. C.J. Henderson, he was supposed to struggle right away. That was a very raw prospect. So now it's about that time. Maybe he breaks out. Really good situation. So I like the, the young talent. I love the upside, how they'll grow throughout the season. I like the mixing and the matching. Uh, they're going to give so many different looks. I'm just curious. I'm always curious about the defensive back, secondaries. It's you know what I played, what I always had a passion for. So the different looks they give, they're just you know, they're gonna grow together. I love that young group to grow together. So I'm really excited to watch that. Uh, and then number one, uh, I I think the Texans are a legit contender. I think some people are talking about like they're a contender, but you know they're too young, maybe another year or two. I think they're a legit contender right now. But I you know because I, I think they're that good. I think they fixed some of their flaws. I, they have a great quarterback that we'll talk more about. They got a pass rush. They got great coaching, great defensive coaching. I feel like they have everything. You know. Maybe they need a little bit more experience. It's really it. Stay healthy. Um, I think they're a legit contender. But there's something, and maybe another thing, people aren't really talking about. It, it's the run D's got to hold up. And I'm not going to sit here and say the run D's bad or anything like that. People might be surprised by this because they were definitely towards the top of the league, top half of the league in run defense last year. But there's some changes there. There were some changes. And I thought the Texans kind of hit they did well in the offseason, like free agency of the offseason. They did well, and they actually might have done better than what they expected. Did they expect to add digs for that price? Did they expect to get Daniel Hunter over these um, you know, other teams or things like that? They did well, but a spot where I thought they kind of, even themselves, they kind of missed a little bit was the interior defensive line. They go from Malik Collins, who was extremely underrated, uh, and Sheldon Rankins to what Fatakasi, Danico Autry, Tim Settle, rotational. Good stop and a run, but really rotational. Uh, but back to Autry. Autry, uh, a, a versatile, underrated player. But he's up there in age. The Titans kind of had him playing more outside recently. And he's going to be asked a lot to play on the inside. How is he going to be on running downs? And he's a decent player. But, you know, so they do get worse on the interior defense line. They kind of messed up a little bit. I, I, and they think they know it because... Uh, you know, that they offered Christian Wilkins, the Raiders gave him too much for them. Then um, Ark Armstead, they wanted him. They traded Malik Collins for next to nothing. They went to get Sheldon Rankins back, and they offered him $1 million less than the Bengals. The Bengals ended up getting him. So that didn't really go to plan. Everything else probably it went better than planned. But So that was the thing there. But uh, D'Amico Ryan's coach is such a good defense that I think it's going to – the interior lines, D line is going to play better, and then factor in Daniel Hunter stops to run pretty well from you know from an edge guy. Um, but Ryan's probably has this group playing better than it looks on paper, and you factor in a linebacker. Some change there, but it should be a pretty good group. Um, they lose Cashman, but they have Al Shire. People probably can argue like who's better for that specific role, but I mean Shire played under D'Amico Ryan's. He's a little more polished now as well. They believe he's better for a reason. Uh, you know, Christian Harris looks pretty solid, but you know, young guys got to step up a little bit. To me, the run D took took a dip. And why I'm talking about this so much with the contender part is because I preach this every year. I think it goes unnoticed because it's a passing league, but you have to stop the run at a pretty decent level to win big games, to win championship football. Because it's an if you can't, if you're mediocre at it, it's an easy game plan. It's an easy way to control the clock, manage the game, win the football game for opposing teams. So you have to be able to stop the run pretty well. I think they took a step down because they were pretty damn good at it last year. Just based on evaluation, I think they took a little bit of a step down, uh, but I don't think enough of a step down here. So I'm curious to see how it looks, how it holds up there. But if you, I think they're a legit contender. I already said that. But if you, if somebody out there, like say they can see the future, see the future and they, and they, and they're saying that the Texans end up being less of a contender than, than we thought. And they ask me like, what, what, what what went wrong? I mean, either you know, for any team, maybe they got beat up and they couldn't, they didn't exceed expect hit expectations. But if it was something to do with the team uh, that just wasn't enough, I would guess specifically that interior defensive line just wasn't enough. But again, they got some guys that could step up just from the good coaching there. So those are some things I'm really watching for uh, for the Houston Texans and the players to watch. Yeah, so I do this for every team, and it seems like a lot. I have kind of. Sometimes under the radar players that just got to step up, breakout guys, uh, guys like that. But the Texans did it a little differently. I got three guys that have all, they're really good players for the Texans. They all have something in common here. Derek Stingley Jr., 
really broke out last year, like mid-season hit, and it was like, okay, there, there he is. That's the guy, that elite prospect. Like he's supposed to be like what Sauce Gardner is. Like they're both supposed to be doing that. Sauce Gardner is considered the best corner in football, and I think Derek Stingley is. It could be that we could. I think people realize he really broke out. He's young. He's good. He's got upside, but I, I don't think people are talking about enough that. With this upcoming season, like we could be talking about him as like one of the best corners and like the elite corners in football, like what he's supposed to be. So I'm really excited to watch him and then where he's going to get to this year. It's again, it's kind of the same thing for all these guys. Will Anderson, Will Anderson, second year guy, it was an elite prospect. We know he's going to break out at this early stage. We know it's very, very realistic. He's going to be very solid, especially playing opposite Daniel Hunter. Will Anderson won rookie, defensive rookie of the year. He was very good, very. I'm trying to say how I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to put this, so it doesn't get taken the wrong way. Very good, well deserved. I expected maybe a little bit more, a little bit more from Will Anderson, which is is a good thing because it's right there, it's ready to hit this year, I think. And a lot of it was what people don't realize is he actually didn't play as many snaps as you think. He played a lot of snaps. They had a good rotation going on. Now it's a full go, I would imagine. Like a, a roll increase, snap increase. Obviously, he was already a starter. Daniel Hunter on the other side. This guy's ready to break loose and go crazy. I think we could be talking about him at the end of the year as one of maybe one of the better pass rushers in football. Number one, obvious one, CJ Stroud. What he did, I was a massive CJ Stroud fan, you know, as a prospect, but what he did last year exceeded everyone's expectations. That's the thing with Stroud. It's like everyone knows it was a ridiculous season, an insanely good season. Everyone knows he's really good. He's a he's a guy of the future. He could be elite. He's probably going to even get better this year. Everyone knows that, but I really don't think people are emphasizing it enough or talking about it enough that what he did in year one was just pretty close to unheard of, or maybe it is unheard of. So, like, you think about it. Like, what could he actually become? It's a little scary to think. Like, this guy could be an elite quarterback. Like, right now, he can be challenging the guys at the very top, perhaps, very early on because he's, like, already polished. He has the poise. He has the smarts. Like, all the arm talent, uh, the mechanics, everything. You know, so just I, I think it needs to be talked about actually more. Like, there's a chance this guy is, like, the the guy like like not just for the Texans we know that but um so these three guys all have that in common like really everyone knows really good upside players they're about to break out even more probably even more than you're thinking in your head right now so really excited to watch those guys some good games to watch here for the Texans and obviously the divisional games the Jags I think are better than people think I think the Titans are better than people think the Colts gave the Texans a battle last year they beat them up pretty good and the first game was early season before the Texans hit their stride and the last game came down to the wire so that's actually a really good division uh but the not so obvious ones I mean kind of obvious but uh, I love Week seven at Green Bay. That is one of the like league wide my favorite games for this year. I mean, young win now, but teams of the future teams if that made sense. Uh two young quarterbacks of the future. I mean, Love and Shroud getting some comparisons from fans and from, from people as well. Uh, maybe because they kind of broke out at the same time, even though it was Stroud's first year, first year for Love starting too. So and there's some similarities, but uh, really good teams. I think I put both these teams in the same category. In the same category, I think people think, yeah, they're contenders, maybe not full on contenders quite yet. While I think they're both legit contenders right now. Like, watch out for these teams. I actually said on Twitter at one point, people were kind of giving me shit that this could be a Super Bowl preview. It's not necessarily my prediction. It could be. It's like that close for me. Um, so I can't wait for that game. I cannot wait. Jets game, uh, week nine, as long as Aaron Rodgers, you know, the Jets are healthy. Otherwise, it's probably not going to be that good of a game, but two possible heavyweights in the AFC. Uh, but uh, coaches with uh, they're, that are very familiar with each other, Robert Salah versus D'Amico Ryans, and the, uh, obviously the Niners' background. They run the same deep. This is the same, same defense that they run. So how's that game plan going to be? How's it going to look? And, I mean, even slow it coming from the Niners. Like, they, they know each other's offenses as well. Um, similar styles all across the board. So that's going to be a lot of fun, like how they game plan and who wins that. It's a battle. That's a battle. Um, even if, like, well, if the Jets aren't healthy or if somebody's not healthy, it's not going to be a good game. You know, so I'm not saying, uh, you know, not that. But even if, like, 
one of the teams doesn't have a, as good of a record as we thought. Like the records are a little like one team's like a juggernaut at the time and one team's like a little underwhelming. It's still going to be a battle for the reasons I explained. And then the big one, Ravens, in, and they, they'll play other big games too. They play they play the Bills. They play the, the Lions, the Chiefs around this range as well. But Ravens in week 17, it, the last game the Texans played was against the Ravens The first in the playoff game. First half, they looked really solid. Second half, they got dominated. So this is going to be a good, it's almost going to be a year apart. Uh, once we get to week 17, it's going to be a good test, a good learning experience. Like, where are we now? Where are they now? It's a good co- kind of comparison. And how are they going into the playoffs? Also, a, a heavyweight AFC battle. Uh, also, this is it is a Christmas game. Yeah, that as well. This could play a part on seeding playoffs, uh, even though they're not in the same division. You know, where, where you place in your division because they're in such tough divisions here that any game is going to matter especially in the AFC here down the stretch. So that's a massive game for the Houston Texans. Uh, Some fans takes. um, A lot of good ones from Twitter slash X. A lot of good ones I had to take. Uh, First, from our Twitter subscribers, X subscribers, uh, Anthony Kramer becoming a true consistent contender with a first place schedule. Yeah, we're kind of looking to see if they can do that. Uh, Improve rushing attack. Yeah, so he has uh, a healthy group of guys some you know but you know, mixing they got better so same things i was saying and i guess we didn't talk about digs enough in this video they add digs i mean he's gonna make an impact and people say maybe he took a step down last year maybe if he's still there if he's a little better whatever he's still gonna be stefan Diggs. it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch he's gonna be definitely an impact kind of curious to see how they use all three of those guys i'm not it's not really a big question i guess for me though they're gonna use all three of those guys like they're they're not set they're not gonna have a ton of two tight end sets or anything like that so uh, that'd be pretty fun. The new Hunter, Will Anderson. Yeah, that, that pass rush duo is going to be really fun to watch. Uh, and then, yeah, the El Shire, D'Amico reunion. Like, is that connection there? Um, is it a big upgrade from Cashman? Is around the same? You know, where, where are we at with that? Cameron Sullivan. And then kind of what we talked about. How much better can Stroud get? Defense shaping up to be elite. But could depth be an issue? And I see other people bringing up depth. I'm, I don't know if I'm really worried about depth. I'm kind of just worried about the interior defensive line. Everywhere else, I'm I'm good with i'm i'm you know i'm pretty good yeah i I guess, I guess if like hunters had his past injuries you know if he goes down that's a major difference i guess if you with and without daniel hunter because remember no more grenard um so i guess there's a point there um too many miles to feed i don't think there's too many miles to feed i think that offense is built uh it, they got the perfect amount of pieces there um and then hot take, they make the Super Bowl. So that's, that's I like adding the hot take there. That's definitely possible. Uh, and there was some, other, yeah, a lot of good ones from other followers on Twitter. This was an interesting one. It's a little different than what we get from Pete Thamelto. Um, I feel like the Texans are that team, all caps, that team for the new fans. And it's a good, it's a good, it's something to think about. Good point here. Something to talk about. Uh, it, for fo- for for fans that are just getting into football whether adults or kids, them and the Lions, I've talked about that in the past too. Lions like felt like America's team last year. Like people were rooting for them like, cause they, they were so bad for so long. And the Texans were, they've kind of had some really bad years and there's a lot of likable young players on the team. So I think it's a really good point and something that another thing that's kind of not, not being talked about. I try to, in these videos, all you kind of notice it from this one. I try to find things that what to watch that people really aren't talking about enough, maybe. So I like this point. Uh, what they have Sawy sauce uh, I feel like you need to be super careful of this team like year two will have a huge target on their back will they live up to hype expectations that's another good point they really really talk about too like maybe it was um, you know not teams didn't really know what to expect from them last year maybe there's like a sophomore type slump for this team I don't really think so but um, higher expectations a little bit more of a game plan so uh, some people think that so maybe that's something to watch uh, then from Marco, can CJ re- keep his receivers happy? Yeah, I see people kind of bringing it up. Is there like enough to go around? I think so. I don't, I'm not really worried about that. Uh, you know, it's not. It, it depends on team because of their system. Uh, I think they're going to be just fine in that category. Just fine. I'm not worried about that at all. You know, so do I end up wrong? Maybe, but um, uh, there was something else with the depth. Yeah, depth at linebacker and safety might be might be an issue. He says. I think there's a little bit more than we think, but uh, and he says fans not happy with the d- defensive tackle movements this off season. We talked about that. It's a big thing that probably isn't being talked about enough. It, they kind of miss. They know it too. Like they, they what their plan was, uh, they didn't kind of reach that. Um, so that could be their biggest issue there. Then big ounce. 
who I know is a Texas fan, has been following us for a long time. Watch out for the linebacker play. Uh, Aziz has already established um, collecting textures and Harrison name. Yeah, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but yeah, I'm curious how the linebackers play. You know, no more Cashman, Perriman, even. Um, these guys got to step up and stop the run because the interior defensive line could be a little bit better doing that, uh, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, how's Aziz going to play where he's like kind of, this is kind of his time to get going after he's got a little bit of experience the last couple of years. Um, you know, Christian Harris really kind of made his name, uh, name for himself down the stretch there. Where, where, where could he, uh, get to, um, you know, so young linebackers continue to get better. I'm, yeah, I'm curious about this group. I think they got a little bit more. It's yeah, they do. They got a little bit more on their shoulders than I think people talk about. They're a little bit, a little bit more pressure. Not a bad thing because again, the interior defensive line took a hit. They got to do that job and fill fill those fill those gaps there. And it's an important position in D'Amico Ryan's defense. You saw him coming from the 49ers. so definitely a group to watch. I don't. There's not too many teams where people are going to watch those linebackers for any reason. Um, but as a team, we kind of got to keep an eye on that. Um, and then uh, Jacob. Uh, Kind of had uh, interesting, you know, like a bold, semi-bold take. Texans improved in every way from last year, but finished second in the division behind Jacksonville. And I like that bold prediction. Not that I say that's my pick. I, I have the Texans winning division right now. Uh, but I do think the J- people are sleeping on the Jags. They're kind of just labeling, labeling them the end of last year Jags. You lost Calvin Ridley. Like, no, they were deadly in the middle of the year. And they were... They can easily get back on track there. But this is a really... I like this bold take because I think people... A lot of time fans go, well, our team improved, but you had the Jags like, oh, like the Texans improved. We're better than last year, but you have them finishing second. And then people kind of, when they say it that way, maybe it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's possible. Like both teams could improve, like a team could improve and have a worse record. It's definitely, but then fans don't realize that sometimes. Uh, not that I think it'll be the case here with the Texans. I think they'll be very, very solid and they'll easily be better in kind of every category to last year, um, like on and off the field, like numbers and is what I mean by off the field. Uh, but it is a pretty good prediction because I think the uh, Trevor Lawrence is about to hit a stride. They, they got coaching. They, I thought defensive coaching, people didn't talk about that enough, like hurt them a lot last year. And they switched that. They got a really solid defensive coach. They got good players, young players. Like the Jags are better than people think, so they're going to give the Texans a battle here. So um, I like that bold, semi-bold take for for multiple reasons there. Um, so love love the you guys playing along a lot, a lot of good takes here. But uh, that'll wrap it up. Again, a playlist on the channel with the videos we have done. We will get to all 32 NFL teams. We're getting there. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter slash X link pin in the comments to kind of play along or get more content. And uh, check out our sponsors, Liquid IV, code GOAT for percentage off. Love that stuff. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.